Hello, we're going to step up some of the technical detail here by going into some of the key pieces of network hardware, which most networks will have. So let's start with a network interface card, sometimes called a network interface controller and often shortened to just NIC or more catchily, just NIC. A device needs to have a NIC to be able to join to a LAN. And this means that every device which can connect to a network needs to have a NIC. And they can look like this in a desktop computer. The customer would only see the bit sticking out the back with an ethernet port, for example. And really that's kind of its key function is to have that port because what this NIC does is it converts between the signals the computer uses and the signals the network needs. So this network might be an ethernet network. Your computer has its own systems. The NIC is converting between the signals which the CPU is able to give out and the signals which the network requires with ethernet in particular. What is converting will depend on what the purpose is. Here is a NIC which is connected to a USB port. It's ethernet going in, but then it's converting to USB, which is different to this desktop computer version. Here is a wireless network interface card for a phone, for example. It's converting between wireless signals and what the phone uses. And here's another USB one, which is also for a wireless network. So a very underrated bit of hardware, which every device pretty much has. Another thing which is, I guess, underrated in a sense, we don't really think much about it, are the actual transmission media itself. Now, arguably, this isn't always hardware. A transmission medium is a method that can be used to send messages. So what are we actually using to send these messages over the network? And we need these to connect up the devices in either a LAN or a WAN. So for example, one transmission medium is just a wire. I mentioned Ethernet so far. This is our main type of a network wire. That is a transmission medium. Another transmission medium is the air, which is used by Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. Now I'm using the phrase transmission medium to refer to one of these things. The plural version is transmission media. So transmission media encompasses both wires and the air. Transmission medium is one or the other. Now looking at some slightly more visible examples of network hardware, starting with a wireless access point, which looks something like this. A wireless access point, as the name suggests, is needed to provide a wireless connection to a wired network. So if you want to use Wi-Fi, you need to have a wireless access point. Now, large local area networks, like in an office building, for example, might need multiple of these dotted about to extend the range of Wi-Fi. Certainly in my school, most classrooms have got a wireless access point, so there's consistent Wi-Fi across the school. You probably haven't got one in your home because in homes, often these are built into routers and one of those is sufficient to cover the size of your house. Speaking of routers, they often look a bit like this, especially in a home. A router is there to ensure that messages in a WAN go to the correct destination. So if you only ever communicate within your LAN, a router isn't needed. A router is only needed once you connect to a WAN. And that's because a router connects between networks. Once you join your LAN to the internet, we need to have a router. Once you join a LAN to another LAN, you need to have a router between that. And a router does, sounds like quite a simple job, but it's really important. The router will receive a message. It will calculate the best path to the destination. That's important because often there are multiple different paths to get from the source to the destination. Once it decides which path is the best, it will then send the message to the next device on that path. That route calculation is really important so that our messages go to the correct place, but also try and avoid congested routes and things like that. A final bit of hardware which you probably haven't come into contact with is a switch. This isn't like a light switch. This is like a, a box like this with loads of ethernet ports most often. What a switch does, similar to a router, so they're similar to a router but subtly different. A switch is used to ensure messages in a LAN go to the correct destination. I used that exact same sentence a minute ago with a router, but with a router, it's messages in a WAN, not messages in a LAN. And again, a very similar sentence to what I just showed you. The switch will receive a message. This time around, there isn't really a route to calculate necessarily because all of your devices are plugged into these ethernet ports. So what it needs to do is identify which port this is addressed to. Where is that message intending to go to? And then it will send the message to the device through that port. 
And it sounds like a much, much easier job than a router has. A router's got to do all those route calculations. Here it should be simpler, and it would be if you only had eight Ethernet ports. But a proper switch, which might be used in a school or an office building, could have a couple of hundred Ethernet ports, and so it becomes a little bit trickier. Now, most normal LANs don't need to use a switch. However, if it's on the bigger end of a LAN, like an office building or a school, we often need to have switches to try and prevent congestion. This is quite a targeted way of sending messages around. The message goes into the switch and it comes out the correct wire to go to the destination. An alternative to this device is called a hub, which receives a message and then sends it out to every other device on the network which on a small network is not really an issue, but if you've got a few hundred devices, that then becomes really congested for no good reason. And also, if you were sending messages to every device on the network, that's not great for security. So a switch, because it's quite targeted, prevents devices receiving messages they shouldn't have access to. So just to show a summary of what we've looked at so far, in green here, I've got a few different local area networks, maybe in a home, maybe this top one is in an office somewhere. We've got these kind of orange wires representing that this is now a WAN because we've joined up these local area networks together. This middle bit could kind of be our internet we're representing. We can see that routers exist at the boundary between all of these networks. Some of these routers have got quite an easy job. This router at the top would receive a message and there's no real route to calculate because it's always gonna go down this one wire. However, this router here has got more decisions to make. I mean, it's got two decisions to make. It needs to decide which path is the correct one. And if I had more options, it'd also be deciding which one is the least congested. We can see some wireless connections. Some of these are coming directly from a router, which might have a wireless access point built in, but in an office building might have multiple different locations where we need to have multiple wireless access points to provide a stable Wi-Fi signal. And we can see a couple of switches being used in this office network. We can see quite a lot of different office computers we don't really want all of them to be receiving the same messages. We want it to be quite targeted to cut down on congestion and also to try and aid security. That's why a switch is being used here.